Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, May 19th, and while the sun is currently shining, it's been raining off and on, and it's going to do that all day. We're going to have thunder showers and whatnot, and boy, we've been getting a lot of rain. But yesterday was beautiful, and I was able to, uh, to plant my vegetable garden, so I'm happy about that. I uh, went with a fairly simple garden so far, at least this year. Um, just got some lettuce and some peppers. Uh, might add something else, I don't know what. Um, we've not had a lot of success with tomatoes, and um, I think I know why. You know, I think it's the, the soil, and I could play with that, but um, I just do this for, for fun. I'm not trying to uh, necessarily perfect tomato growing or anything like that. And we also don't have very much luck with uh, things like zucchini, which is bizarre because I thought you couldn't uh, avoid growing zucchini. Uh, anyway, got, got enough room for something else. I just haven't decided what it's going to be yet. But the plants are in. They're soaking up the rain today, so all is good. So I'm uh, enjoying some Mixture 79 in uh, one of my Danny Shure pipes. And uh, need to relight. And Danny, if you're watching, I, I hope you're well. I haven't heard from you in a while, buddy. But I know you've been occupied and uh, got more important things to do than hang around these parts. Uh, but we're all thinking of you. Speaking of Mixture 79, I had an interesting experience um, two Fridays ago. I uh, met with uh, my friend Eric, who had uh, just recently started, had recently tried Mixture 79. He said, wow, this stuff's great. So, he had the pouch that he was uh, smoking, and he said, uh, you know, sm smell this. It's, it's such a strong licorice. Uh, smell and I now I've not ever really gotten a strong licorice smell out of mixture 79 it's there but it's not like you know the most prominent thing this pouch of mixture 79 smelled like I had just opened up a bag of black licorice I mean it was really really strong and uh, it surprised me because one of the things that I've noted and other people have noted about mixture 79 is that it does seem to be pretty consistent uh, but something Something very different <laughs> occurred during the batch that that pouch was taken from because I've never, you know, I've had it in pouches, I've had it in bulk now, and, uh, you know, it's been a couple of years I've been enjoying it, and I've never uh, run into anything that licorice-y. So it's interesting. Um, hopefully they get that under control because it's good to know that what I'm smoking is what you're smoking. and You know, at least if we disagree on it, we know what we're disagreeing on. So I had a good, uh, interesting week. I've uh, been very busy at work. If you saw my Friday video, I talked about that a bit. Um, but have been having some time to to do a bit of reorganization and clean up down here in the shop. It's a it's a big project, you know. When you've been in the same space for, uh, well, heck, this this shop's going on 20 years now. Uh, you just you just acquire stuff and you got to sort through it. And you know, I'm finding things and I'm saying, what what is this? Why? <laughs> I don't even have this. But I came across a box of um, fly tying stuff. And the story behind this is that a friend of mine, uh, when I first joined the company that I work for, uh, I met this very kind gentleman uh, named Dave. And Dave was a former fly tire, fly fisherman. Uh, he stopped because he had trouble with his vision and he, he couldn't do it anymore um, and he you know we were talking one day about fly tying and he said hey I got a box of fly tying stuff if you want it you're welcome to it and I said great and you know I was expecting like a little shoe box or something and he gave me this massive uh, box of stuff and uh, it was it was great it was all kinds of material and tools and everything and you know I was early enough in my fly tying that 
I didn't have a lot of these things. And it, also, the nice thing about it was that you know he had started quite some time before me, uh, so he had a lot of things that were older, um, maybe no longer available, or much more expensive now than they were then. Uh, and I, I got a similar, my start in, in fly tying actually was when my, uh, my father-in-law uh, similarly gifted me a, a bunch of fly tying material and tools and everything. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's generosity like that that uh, sets us on the path sometimes. So, I went through this box at the time and, you know, took out everything that I needed, but there was a lot of stuff in there that I for whatever reason, thought, I'll get to this someday. And I put it back in the box, and I closed the box up, and I forgot about it. So that was mm, probably 18 years ago. 17, maybe. So, I came across this box this week, and I thought, well, let's see what's in it. I opened it up. Now, a lot of the stuff was not worth uh sorry the uh the phone's ringing upstairs i don't know if you can hear that or not um so a lot of the stuff was uh like empty containers and packages and stuff like that so i, I cleared all that out uh and then there were a few odds and ends that were uh sort of interesting and worth keeping and then i came across this and i never never thought that the two hobbies would collide in quite this way but he had a package of yellow bowl pipe cleaners. Where do you see these? There's a couple of white ones in here, but look at the color on those. <laughs> now, Dave was not a smoker, um, and I'm sure he had these as a material for fly tying. He was using them in some fly pattern or the other. But, uh, doesn't say how many pipe cleaners you got, but this pack was 10 cents. And Yellow Bowl Honey of a Pipe Cleaner keeps pipes dry and sweet. And then there's lots of Yellow Bowl advertising, like smoke a Yellow Bowl pipe. It's easier to break in because the bowl is lined with real honey. And on the back, <laughs> more Yellow Bowl ad copy. And then a little advertisement for B Brand Pipe Sweetener. Um, B band pipe sweetener keeps cleans, ref, re, cleans, freshens, and sweetens your pipes. And then it tells you the 101 other uses for yellow bowl pipe cleaners. So you can clean typewriters. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> you wouldn't think that would be a big selling point today. Uh, cleans typewriters, combs, and gas ranges. <laughs> I, I don't understand that. Um, artwork, sculpting, toy figures plant ties and other garden uses, curling or setting hair and manicuring, etc. So, Yellow Bowl tried to open up the market on pipe cleaners. <laughs> but I thought that was interesting, just a little bit of uh, pipe smoking history there. And, uh, yeah, really nice condition, given, given the age of this thing. And we do spend a little bit more than 10 cents for a pack of pipe cleaners today. So I thought you'd enjoy seeing that. And yeah, I talk about was talking about Dave in the past tense there. Dave is fine. Uh, as far as I know, I actually haven't heard from him in a few years. But uh, Dave retired, so I don't see him like I used to. Um, in fact, I haven't seen Dave at all for quite a while. But my point is, <laughs> I believe he's fine. I didn't mean to speak of him in the past tense. Uh, so... Mixture 79 is not wanting to stay lit today for some reason. The other thing I wanted to show you, tell you about, is I joined a an organization. Let me get the little flyer out here. This is from the Midwestern Tool Collectors Association, and you can find them at WMTCA, Midwestern Tool Collectors Association, 
MWTCA, I think I said it wrong, uh, .org. And hopefully you'll be able to see that address there underneath a nice picture of Roy Underhill. Um, it's a very interesting organization. It's I'm not in the Midwest. It's nationwide. Um, this is the group that hosted that uh, tool meet that I told you about a few weeks ago, um, which was a lot of fun, uh, re really, really interesting time. And the main reason I joined, because I'm... I'm not a tool collector, and most importantly, if my wife asks, I'm not a tool collector. That's an extremely important point. But I do like, I like tools, and I like obscure tools. I, I like learning about things that, you know, unfortunately don't get used anymore and have just disappeared. Um, I shouldn't say unfortunately, the, the task that they were meant to facilitate no longer is necessary, uh, for whatever reason. And... I'll give you an example of that in a minute. But the main reason I joined the organization was for this. Uh, this is their quarterly publication. It's called The Grist Mill. This is the December 2018 issue, and this is the mailing wrapper that's on it. Uh, the, the magazine itself is actually a very nice quality, uh, you know, as good as any any magazine that you might get. and. It's got some really fascinating stuff in it. So, in this issue, um, I can't read in the in the camera here, but uh, there's an article on women who led tool manufacturing, and that was really fascinating. In, the, in like early 1900s, there were women actually running tool companies, which is is kind of interesting. Um, something, some stuff on the tight grip wrench company, uh, or the inability to discover who the tight grip wrench company actually was. It was a very fascinating article. Something called the Row Electric Reel Tape Measure. This is this is really cool. This was like the first reel tape measure, the first reeled uh, tape measure. Uh, there was nothing electric about it. It's just that at the time, electric was trendy, so the word electric got applied to a lot of things. And then there's this article on a foot-powered lathe. Uh, Really interesting, and and then it's you know it's got the sort of updates on on the various regional gatherings and plans for the annual meetings and stuff. But it's just got these fantastic articles and pictures of schools. I want to show you some examples here without really getting into too much detail about what you're looking at. But to give you an idea or, or a flavor of the kind of article, if I can find it. There we go. This is this is the article on the tight grip tool company, the tight grip wrench company, and it's all centered around this one wrench that the author found uh, in a in a lot of tools that he purchased, and he wanted to learn more about the company, so he started doing investigative work and. Interestingly enough, he's been able to locate two, I believe there's a total of three, so two other wrenches, similar wrenches, from the Tight Grip Tool Company, but he cannot find any information on the existence of this company. It's got um, a patent applied for date on the tool, and it gives a location. I'm sorry, I closed it now, and I, I, I want to say that it was um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but I could be wrong about that. And he's done everything he could to find this company, and... He's, it, it's actually come up cold. He cannot trace the roots of this tool. That may not matter to anyone. Uh, I find it interesting, and clearly he found it interesting enough to write a whole article about it. So if you're, if you're like me, if you like these sort of odd tools and just like knowing the history of tools, the history of tool works, uh, companies like uh, Miller Falls and Stanley and things like that, and you just like to look at uh, tools... This is a great publication, and it's really inexpensive to join the the, the uh, Midwestern Tool Collectors Association. The dues are, I think, twenty six dollars a year, and you're getting uh, a better magazine, in my opinion, than any woodworking magazine you're going to pick up at at the uh, wherever you buy magazines. I don't even know where people buy magazines anymore. Um, yeah, it just it's well written. It's fascinating stuff, and it's all 
about tools. So that's my little ad for the Midwestern Tool Collectors Association. But I've, I've only been a member for a few months now, and I've really enjoyed everything that's that's come out of that. I've, I've more than gotten my $26 worth already. So thought you'd enjoy knowing about that. Uh, don't have much of a, of a shop update, guys, other than I'm continuing to organize and move stuff around and clean and find pipe, old pipe cleaners and such. I will ultimately have things in a, in a state where I'll be able to take you on a bit of a tour and uh, you know show you what I've been doing, show you what... Uh, what else is going on? Um, by the way, a few people commented last week about the lights looking better. I, the lights aren't on. These, <laughs> these are the same lights that I've always had. Um, the lights that I've installed are on the other side of the shop, and I have not wired them in yet. I, I can plug them in and, and see how they look, and they look fantastic. Uh, but they're not on right now. So thank you for appreciating it, but they, they, they just it's not the case. Anyway, folks, I... Uh, I think we got to go shopping today. It's uh, it's kind of a common thing now. We, we've fallen into this routine where we go out to breakfast and get our groceries, and, and that's fine. I, I like spending that time with, with my wife. Um, so that's what I think I'm going to do, and then maybe later this afternoon I'll be back down in the shop uh, opening up some boxes and throwing away stuff. Uh, so I hope you all have a great Sunday and enjoy the, uh, the, the remainder of the weekend and a fantastic week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.